My name is Peter Osborne. I'm the director of Osborne Samuel Gallery. Amongst other things, we are sculpture specialists, have done Masterpiece since it began, and I'm delighted to have been invited to talk briefly about some of my highlights chosen from different galleries showing at Masterpiece online this year. One of the uh, sculptures I've chosen is by an artist who I used to know a long time ago, Igor Mitterai. Um, who has been brought to Masterpiece Online by my good friend Peter Femfeld from Die Galerie in Frankfurt in Germany. Um, Die Galerie represent many, many interesting European painters and sculptors, and they've worked with Mitterai and with the Mitterai estate for many years. I actually exhibited Igor's work in London in 1991, a big blockbuster show in London and at the Yorkshire Sculpture Park and elsewhere. And what you're looking at here is an amazing piece of neoclassicism, but at the same time, an incredibly powerful sculptural object. Uh, Igor's work is very definitely closely associated with classical elements, powerful figures, strong images of men, recumbent, nearly always men, warriors, gods, classical figures, powerfully done in bronze and in marble. Uh, when we did the show in London those years ago, it was very definitely based around the marble and bronze sculptures that he was doing at that time. Sadly, Igor died in 2014 and his estate is now largely represented by Die Galerie. And I'm so glad that they brought his work back to London where it hasn't been seen recently. This Henry Moore is a classic mother and child figure, a later work from 1980, chosen from our extensive collection of work by Henry Moore, in whom we specialize. Indeed, we have an exhibition at the gallery later this year in October. I've chosen this sculpture because it is typical of Moore's later works. Here we have the simplified mother wrapping her arms around the child. The child is the center of this sculpture. The mother is just expressing tenderness. There is a delicate touch of her hands, just balancing the child who is more animated. The mother is still calm, maternal, the legs truncated because the lower part of her body has no relevance to the structure of this sculpture. Moore's later works from 1980 until he died, a very much a coda, where he went back to the essence of his early work, reflecting the maternal values that he learned, the shapes. His mother, for example, influenced the way he molded and modeled shoulders, torso. There's a strength there, but there's also a tenderness and a delicacy and a balance. The child is animated, the mother is calm, her head slightly tilted forward, and I think it's a perfect example of Moore's sculptural ability, where he was able to connect two individual people, a mother and a child, but to create one whole sculpture as a consequence. I've chosen this Lynn Chadwick, which is being exhibited by Connaught Brown, because it's such a good example of Chadwick's later work. Here we are in 1980, and he is modeling elegant figures, sitting couples on seats, couples on benches in different scales. This is a maquette for a larger work, um, using the drapery and the cloak to accentuate the contours of the figure. And in this case, he has polished the bronze of the heads, the triangle and the square to draw your attention to the two faces of the figures. Often described as Chadwick's equivalent of the king and queen figures. Um, there is a certain majesty about them, a certain formality, and perhaps unusually for Chadwick, they're not particularly dynamic, but they have poise and they have grace and they have a certain authority. But never lose sight, as ever with Chadwick's couples, there is a dramatic tension between the two figures. And that's what I particularly like about this sculpture. Even though the man and the woman are looking ahead, there is still some kind of conversation going on between them. 
there is some kind of angst, some kind of, of, of vibration which is filling the air between them, even though they're looking straight ahead. Many of Chadwick's figures, of course, the figures are looking towards each other, and there it's easier to read the conversation. Here, perhaps less so, but one can imagine quite easily how these two figures, what they are thinking, what they might be saying to each other as they look straight ahead before them. Beautifully modeled figures, very delicate. Um, you can see in the bronze, the veins of the original modeling in the plaster from which the mold was taken to cast the bronze. It's a really perfect example of Chadwick's work from the 1980s when he was at the height of his powers and doing some of his best later works. Now I've chosen these library steps um, designed by James Ryan at the Edward Barnsley workshop. I'm a huge fan of Edward Barnsley's work and obviously the workshop now producing these amazingly beautiful objects. Of course, this is not an obvious choice for a sculpture, but it absolutely is a sculpture. Library steps, well, you may have a library. Even if I did have a library, I'm not sure I'd want to use these delicately carved walnut steps to access my books. It's a beautiful sculpture in its own right. And I think Ryan's creations often are. I've been looking at them at Masterpiece for years and full of admiration for not just the craftsmanship and the exquisite use of natural woods like walnut, as is the case here, but just the way they become sculptures. And it's so important to remember that sculpture can be anything. It doesn't have to be a specific non-objective thing. It can be functional. Ceramics make beautiful sculptures. Wood makes beautiful sculpture. These objects are as legitimate as sculptures as anything else in my own mind. And if you just look closely at this particular object, how beautifully it's made, the curve of the walnut, the, the rise of the two sides of it as it reaches its pinnacle at the top. I would put this on a pedestal in my gallery and call it a sculpture any day. And I think it's absolutely beautiful. Now again, um, this is an unusual choice for a sculpture, but again, it is absolutely a sculpture. And um, Sandra and Tagore Gallery, who have brought this chun to Masterpiece Online, um, I think it's very difficult from a photograph to get the essence of what the artist is here trying to do. Um, chun is a Korean sculptor, uh, born in 1944, spent a long time in America, where he is extremely well known, less so in Europe, perhaps. And his working method is highly unusual. Here you're looking at his aggregation series. And the aggregation series relates back to old Korean textbooks. If you look closely, you can see that these are little blocks of polystyrene, which have been wrapped with this Korean mulberry paper, which was used to make the textbooks. These are then individually dyed. He uses natural dyes like tea, really, really interesting. And obviously there's a group of people who work with him at the studio and then they assemble, they tie them with little string and then they assemble these creations. This one looks quite two dimensional, but it's not. Imagine the contours of the moon. It has, it has declivities, it has, it has edges to it. And some of the works are actually completely freestanding. I saw one in Venice, which was suspended from the ceiling, like a big beehive. Um, and these works really do require attention. But if you're interested in Chun's work, always ask the gallery representing them to send you pictures from the side, because there you get the idea of how they're constructed. It's like a grid, a three-dimensional grid, and there's a subtlety to them, and, and uh, 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 they just become something completely different. But if you look closely, they are just assembled by tiny, tiny, tiny little blocks which have been dyed, wrapped, tied with string and wrapped and then assembled by his team at the studio in Korea to make these amazing creations.